football. From the Big Ten, the game that could determine the Big Ten title, the Indiana Hoosiers, founding to their best season in two decades, led by quarterback Dave Framey to wide receiver Ernie Jones. The Hoosier defense, led by one of the country's top outside linebackers, Van Waiters. He can dominate a game. Michigan State quarterback Bobby McAllister, closing the season strong, will lead the Spartans today. The game prize, Michigan State University today, concludes its first ever season sellout. Capacity crowds at Spartan Stadium for six home games. Today, it's a fitting capper. The Indiana Hoosiers are here, and the Rose Bowl ticket will go to Michigan State if the Spartans can win. As you look at the top of the Big Ten standings, if Indiana wins today, the Hoosiers still have to beat Purdue next Saturday to lock in the Rose Bowl. And if Indiana wins today, Iowa playing at Ohio State will stay in the hunt with a win. Hello again, everybody. Let's lock in one other fact to add to the dimension of this season. This is the first time ever that Indiana and Michigan State have both beaten Michigan and Ohio State both in the same season. So we are in, I think, for a treat this afternoon. What about the coaches? What do they think? Where do the coaches think this game will swing? I definitely feel it will be one up front. It's going to be who can control who up front and on both sides of the ball. That's always it, isn't it? That's yeah. the way I always look at it. <laughs> I think it swings in a couple areas, definitely in the trenches with the offense and defensive line. It's going to be a it's going to be a tough game. It's going to be a street fight out there. And it's going to get involved like all big games in turnovers. And here come the Hoosiers. 7 and 2, some 2500 faithful in the corner of the stadium yelling their lungs out. Indiana 5-1 in the conference, losing only at Iowa. Coach Bill Mallory, fourth year, proving once more that he is a master at rebuilding university football programs. And right behind the Hoosiers come the Spartans. 6-2-1 overall, 5-0-1 in the Big Ten. Coach George Perlis, fifth year. He, too, has turned a football program around. Well, we've heard what the coaches say. Now our analyst, Bob Greasy. What say thee? <laughs> it's great to be here. It's excitement. It's uh, the way it should be. There's an old saying that offense sells tickets, defense wins championships, and if that be the case, this being a championship game, I would think that Michigan State has the inside track. They're the number three defense in the country, number one against the rush, and let's look at the defenses and see how they compare. You can see that Michigan State is very aggressive. Interceptions, quarterback sacks, tackles for loss, they're at the top of the Big Ten standings. Indiana State, Indiana, uh, on the other hand, is last in each category. That tells you that Indiana has not, ha, does not have a very aggressive type of defense. They're very laid back. Uh, Coach Mallory has told us that they are not a very uh, a talented group. They have one fine player in Van Waiters. Michigan State, on the other hand, is a very aggressive. They'll attack you. They make big plays. The key, as I see it, uh, Keith, for Indiana is Dave Cramey, the quarterback, subbing for Dave Schnell, who had an emergency appendectomy last week. He has got to play well. I don't think Indiana is going to be able to run. He has got to be able to throw the football. On the other side, Michigan State has to run. Bobby McAllister, their quarterback, is not the type of uh, thrower that can carry an offensive team, so he needs to run. I think it'll be an interesting ball game. Incidentally, for those of you who remember the old no-repeat rule, go back into the 60s for that one when the great Michigan State team of 66 undefeated stayed home. The Purdue Boilermakers with this man at quarterback went off to Pasadena to the Rose Bowl. Oh, they won, too. Kind of like that rule. 14-13, <laughs> they won over USC. This series, well, Michigan State has a big edge. It started back in 1922. This ABC Sports Exclusive. 
Brought to you by the heartbeat of America, today's Chevrolet. By Coors, the beer with a difference worth tasting. Coors is the one. By Cigna, a leader in insurance, health care, employee benefits, and financial services. And by AT&T, the right choice. What's all the excitement at your Chevy dealers? It's Chevy National Pickup Month. Come see new option packages for 1988 that can save you up to $1,900 on Chevy S10 pickups. And take the test drive of the decade in the advanced new full-size Chevy. The first all-new full-size pickup introduced in this decade. See your Chevy dealer now during Chevy National Pickup Month. Everybody else is. of fate. A young man who helped the Indiana Hoosiers get to this point of the season. Won't play today. His name, Dave Schnell, starting quarterback. Here he is now with Mike Adamley. Keith Wright, you are. You know, if it wasn't for bad luck, Dave would have no luck at all when it comes to playing Michigan State. Last year, separated shoulder knocked you out of most of that game, too. Yeah, you know, I've had a run of bad luck when I come up here and play Michigan State. This year, an appendicitis. Last year, a, a, a bad shoulder in the first series of the game. Uh, I'm starting to wonder if I don't have a, a you know, a little curse on me or something. David, I know the Hoosiers aren't worried, though, because they have a great deal of faith in Dave Cramey. Yeah, you know, the team, Dave gets in there and leads the team real well. They have a lot of confidence in him. The coaches have a lot of confidence in him. He's, a, he's an excellent passer. He did a fine job last week against Illinois in, in uh, leading them back um, to win. Hurts a little bit to be in civilian clothes, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. It's kind of disappointing. Okay. Right. Stay cool. All right. Keith, Indiana, Michigan State, it's going to be a great one. Should be. The capacity crowd comes to their feet. The teams deploy for the kickoff. The Spartans will kick it away. John Langlow will hit it. And going deep to receive for the white-shirted Indiana Hoosiers, we expect three people, Ken Allen, Ernie Jones, and Spud Washington. Bill Mallory is a coach who tries very hard to prepare his team in such a way that it won't beat itself. That's why he's got all these people back there to handle the kickoff. Don't let the ball go bouncing around at the end of a kick. And he's got three people, all flyers, back there. Probably three of the fastest men on the team waiting for the kickoff. They play it on the artificial surface at Spartan Stadium. Beautiful day for the game, and here we go. It's a high-hanging short kick at the seven-yard line to Ken Allen. Fumbles the football. Just when I get through saying he teaches them not to <laughs> hurt themselves, the ball comes squirting loose. But you're going to see some mistakes probably early on because you know the adrenaline valves are wide open. There was a lot of excitement. These teams have been looking forward to this game the entire week. Right there, you see the ball come out, and luckily for Indiana... It goes out of bounds before anyone can gain possession. And the Hoosiers now will come up for the first snap of the ball game, having possessed it at their own 26-yard line. It is a team that has been a little slow to get going. First quarter has not been terribly productive for them all season, but they've been gangbusters thereafter. And they start with a run. Up the middle goes Anthony Thomas Thompson, and Thompson is belted down, hit right at the line of scrimmage. The lineup, it's Simons, Radke, Finnish, Schrader, Moore, and Jordan along the front for the Hoosiers. White people are Allen and Jones with Dave Craney at quarterback, Colts the fullback, and Thompson is the tailback. And there's very little gain on the first carry. Thompson had over 100 yards a year ago here in this stadium against Michigan State running the ball. There are those who doubt today if he can do that against the stunt 4-3. They bounce this one outside the tackle. 
And it's Thompson carrying again. And the Michigan State defensive people swarm in. Szymanski, Nichols, Davis, and Buddy, the down four. They play a stunt 4-3 with more snow. Larson, the linebacker. Snow in the middle, the most active. The defensive secondary, Reed and Barnett on the corners. Miller and Crum, the safeties. And the last time we were here, Miller had four interceptions. The ball is resting near the 27. It'll be third down and eight. And Tony Buford and Ernie Jones are the two white people for Indiana. Could be Creamy's first pass of the day. It is. Has time. Pass away. Pass is good to the tight end, Tim Jordan, who has been coming on very well in the late going of the season. And he picks up a first down for the Hoosiers out near the 39. It's a big completion for Cramey, a senior who has played a lot for the Hoosiers. In fact, their sixth all-time passer. So he's been in the ball game a few times. Makes a nice completion. The two wide receivers took off from the left side. They drug the tight end over to that side. Nobody there. He picked up the first down. Paulus Marte is in at tight end right now, replacing Jordan. They go wide to the field side, and... Uh, well, Jordan stayed in. They got double tied in. Give it to Thompson. And Thompson will have a yard or so as he disappears under a pile of green just about the line of scrimmage. Percy Snow, the middle linebacker, gets a lot of calls in a football game because he's the loose cannon back there. That's not 4 3. The big guys up front take down the offensive lineman and that freeze number 48 and he is not a big man as you see right there 6 3 and 2 11 he is a middle linebacker the put reason, a knob on you though. the reason he can play that position because all the stunning up front doesn't allow any of the offensive linemen to get to him Ramey is back to throw ball is tipped at the line of scrimmage the pass was intended for Thompson coming out of the backfield and one of the big linemen looked like Davis, maybe. Travis Davis reached up and got a hand on it. There he is, number 75. Cramey stands 6'1", 210. So he's a little more than average height. The thing that Indiana loses with Cramey rather than Schnell is some mobility. Cramey does not move around as well. Schnell had the uh, ability, if the play was, was busted or somebody was in the pocket, he could scramble, make a positive big play maybe, out of maybe a, perhaps a sack. From the 41, it is third and eight. Spartans jumping around. Pretty good protection again for Cramey. Drills the receiver, Tony Buford, the senior from Aurora, Illinois, has an Indiana first down at the Michigan State 46-yard line, and they've been this kind of a team all year. It's third and eight. They convert it. Third and eight. They convert it. Well-designed play here. Buford, the outside of the two wide receivers, is just going to come across the field, similar to what Jordan ran on the first third down situation. So two third downs, two big plays for Indiana, and George Perlis has got to be concerned that they're passing uh, so well against his uh, Spartan defense. They have not been able to penetrate and put pressure on Cramey yet. He had one pass battered aside by alignment. That's Jordan in motion on first down from the Spartan 46. Outside it goes to Thompson. He turns the corner, and he's got eight or nine yards before he's run out by Percy Snow and the free safety Todd Crum. Thompson, six-footer, 205, a sophomore only from Terre Haute. Last year, uh, Keith, right here on this field, Thompson ran for over 100 yards on Michigan State. A tough uh, run defense. And talking with the Indiana coaches, their philosophy was, hey, we're not coming in here left-handed. We're going to go with what we do best. And they were going to talk about running right at Michigan State. They did that on their first uh, couple of runs. It didn't work. And that time, they got some yardage going wide. Second down and one for Indiana. Fullback hey! hey! has it this time. And Tom Polk, the senior from Henry Mancini's hometown, Aliquanta, PA is going to have the first down. You know, Keith, we talk about the stunt 4-3. Watch these two defensive linemen. Davis will cross this way. Nichols will come behind, and the runner will go right into where he was. It messes up the blocking, and right there, Nichols, number 83, makes the hit 
but a first down for Indiana. Very tough to block those Indiana. defensive linemen when they're stunning right and left. You don't know which way they're going. Ball is at the 32 of Michigan State. So the Hoosiers put on a drive in the opening possession of the ball game. This is pitch low back to Anthony Thompson. I think they got away with a clip maybe down there because somebody took number six, Derek Reed, down from behind. Percy Snow came across to get the tackle and take him out of bounds. So there's uh, no gain on the play. In fact, uh, it appears from here he may have lost a half a yard. You mentioned it a little bit earlier, Keith, that Indiana, a notorious, notoriously slow starting team, seems to have gotten their engine started a little bit in the locker room because they got a nice drive going here. Be a big boost for uh, Bill Mallory if they could get a score on the board first. Ball is back near the 33 now on second down and a little more than 10. Craney on a roll, whips it to the sideline, pass into the hands of Ernie Jones, but this is a man that doesn't drop many. Ernie, look, you look at him. See, he's looking right back into a very bright sun, and I doubt very much if he ever saw the ball. Well, the sun is shining. You can tell from the shadows the field is mostly in shade at that end, but watch here on the replay. You see him looking right back into the sun. He doesn't drop many balls, he, although he did drop a few fumbles, a few balls after he had them last week. As you look at the shadows, in about uh, 20, 25 minutes, the field will be in complete shade. On third down, the Hoosiers are two for two. They're third and ten now. They've converted twice at third and eight. And Cramey back. Still no pressure on him. His pass is away, and he doesn't hook up with Jones. Jones was deeper downfield. And Cramey threw the ball on a short up and out, and it goes incomplete. And there's a final as Michigan came from behind to beat Illinois 17 to 14. So Indiana now comes up to fourth down, and Pete Stojanovic, the place kicker, has brought the tee out to put it down at the Michigan State 39. So he's looking at a 49-yard try. He's one out of six between 40 and 49 on the season. One for one, however, past the 50-yard line. Plenty of leg. Got it. From 49 yards, the Indiana Hoosiers take the lead with 11.05 to play in the first quarter. Snake is yet to handle the ball. Last week, Michigan State tailbacks Blake Ezor and Lorenzo White both rushed for over 100 yards. The first time two Spartans have done that in the same game since 1976. Just moments ago, Washington and UCLA. After a Washington fumble on the first possession of the game, UCLA took it to the line of scrimmage for their first attempt in the game. And Eric Ball ran it 22 yards for a touchdown. It's 7-0 UCLA on their first play of the game. They're looking towards the Rose. And here at East Lansing, the Indiana Hoosiers take the opening kickoff, run off 12 plays, and cash in a 49-yard field goal from Pete Stojanovic and take the lead 3-0. And now Michigan State will see the football for the first time as Pete will kick it off. The deep people are Craig Johnson, 28, Blake Ezor, 26. Both burners. High, short kick. About the 13 and comes back across the 25 near the 28 yard line. Michigan State opens with a big man, Mandarich, Kula, Sherma, Tata, Hool, Sargent up front. The wide people for Michigan State, Ryzen and Boyer, McAllister at quarterback, Moore the fullback, and Lorenzo White the tailback. And they will begin from, let's call it, 
their 27. Boyer wide to the bottom. Ryzen split to the top. Indiana shows blitz and they're coming. The handoff goes to the up man, and it's a good thing. Uh, well, it's White who slipped by the fullback to take it, but it's a good thing because that number, what was it? Was it Waiters that came and fly? No, it was Hickerson, cornerback. Hickerson. Yeah. Harris, Sams, and Bauer are the up front people. Three down with Waiters and Huff outside, Bates and Bush inside at linebacking. Hickerson, the man who just blitz at one corner, Ziegler the other corner, and the safeties are Hall and DeWitts. This is White again, and Lorenzo steps through the hole and takes it out near the 34. Joe Huff, a senior from Newburgh, Indiana, got the first hit on him. One of the things that Michigan State will try to do is run away from Van Waiters, who was an outside linebacker, was an all-Big Ten player last year. They want to go two tight ends and run at Huff. Huff was only, is only 6'1 and 225, and when he came to Indiana four years ago, he only weighed 200 pounds as a walk-off. They want to try and run at him with a tight end. You got a double tight end alignment. They go back to Lorenzo White, picks his way through the crowd and breaks it for the first down, and here's our first penalty flag of the ball game. I think you got a holding call coming up against Michigan State. Tom Quinn is the referee. Here's Waiters. Now take a look at him. 86 is Kasevich, the backup tight end. Waiters is the one man that they have to take care of. You see, he gets tripped up and blocked pretty well. Last year, uh, Perlis was telling us that the one man that caused them not to do well on the ground was uh, Van Waiters. He always goes to the wide side of the formation, the wide side of the field. The referee Tom Quinn there, the umpires Bob Pickens, Jim Mullendor, the headlinesman, Ed Marisich, line judge, uh, field judge is Michael Sheehan, Ken Baker, the side judge, Mike Nevin is the back judge. We have holding on the offense. Repeat third down. So that wipes out the first down and a good run by Lorenzo White and Here. Bobby McAllister now looking for the play to come in from the sideline. Now he's got it. Well, Keith, I think we saw the holding it's going to be right here on uh, Van Waiters by Kasevich. Grabs a hold of his jersey, holds on to him, and then just shoves him, which is legal. The shove is legal, the hold is not. Double wide, bottom of the picture, three wide outs. McAllister gives it to White. White cuts it up the middle. And Michigan State will punt it. They try to spread out the Indiana defense, but a typical Mallory team, the Hoosier State at home, did not give up the lanes, and they get White short of any sizable gain. Crowd's a little anxious here. There were a couple of boos in there yeah, on third down and right. running. I think George Perlis just wants to ease into this game, not, not do anything that's going to give Indiana any more momentum than they might have at this point. And you can see by those numbers, he has an outstanding punter. That can be a weapon for you, a big weapon. And Montgomery has been there. The Hoosiers come up. There are 10 people up there. They're going after him. He knocks it out of there, and it's a beauty. And it runs Tony Buford all the way back inside the 15. And he comes back to about the 22. Good coverage by the Spartans. This is what I mean about a punter being a weapon. That is a 57-yard punt. And Carlos Jenkins downfield in a hurry to bring Buford down. This is Jim Hill in New York. Oklahoma leads Missouri 17-3 in the third quarter. Lydell Carr's replacement, Rodney Anderson, has fumbled twice. However, Jamel Holloway's replacement, backup quarterback Charles Thompson, has scored on a 14-yard touchdown run, and he has also rushed for over 70 yards. Oklahoma leading Missouri 17-3 in the third quarter. Now back to Keith Jackson. All right, Jim, thank you. And here, the field is now almost covered by shadow. As Indiana comes in for its second possession of the ball game, leading three to nothing with eight minutes and 37 seconds to play in the first quarter. The football is at the Hoosier 22. Andre Powell is the fullback. Anthony Thomas, Thompson, I want to call him Thomas for some reason. Thompson is the tailback, and Thompson has the ball bouncing outside with it. 
He's shirt tailed by Percy Snow. Snow stepped through the middle and with good speed ran him down. Snow leads the team in tackles, and as we showed you on that graphic in our opening, the tackles for loss in the Big Ten. Michigan State is third coming in. They lead the, lead the Big Ten in sacks. They are very aggressive. That time, Indiana trying to run around in and not successful. George Furless told us yesterday that he thought Indiana would have to bounce outside if they were to gain a whole lot of yards on the ground. And they have started doing it already. That's almost motion. I think it is motion because the penalty flag comes flying out of the linesman's pocket as Andre Powell carries and Percy Snow gets another tackle. Got to set a second. Procedure call against the Hoosiers. Little mistakes. Well, both of these teams, Keith, have been penalized a great deal this season. Take a look at the, the motion. He turns forward a little bit too soon. Now, if he would have went there and set for a second, it would have been we legal. Have the legal motion against the offense. We will repeat second down. So that backs him up five. The ball coming back to the 18-yard line. Just to finish they need 14. My, finish my point about these two teams and their mistakes. Uh, Penalty-wise, Michigan State is the most penalized team in the Big Ten. Not surprising when you have an aggressive no. style of defense. Right. Indiana, however, is the uh, second from the bottom, or second from the most penalized team in the Big Ten. So their, their defense, although it's a conservative one, also gets penalized a lot. Students of Michigan State on that corner over there, and they're making a lot of noise as that pass thrown low ricochets off the shoulder pad of one of the linemen. I guess it might have been Davis again. Travis waving at it. He knocked one aside early on. And so now the Hoosiers look at third down and 14. When you come into a big ball game like this, it is not an unwise thing to do to be a little deliberate in the early going. There's no question about that. <laughs> wound up. <laughs> and, it's, and, and Indiana has done that. They have thrown shorter passes, which have been successful. Michigan State uh, declined to throw on third and long, and they were backed up in their own territory. Buford and Jones, the wideouts. They're coming to the same side as Jones comes in motion and Cramey back to throw. Pressure on, pass away, incomplete. It was Jordan, the tight end, crossing the intended receiver, but Travis Davis had broken loose and it was right in the face of Cramey when he threw the ball. Travis Davis has had an outstanding year. He had five sacks against Ohio State, which was a big, uh, which was a Michigan State record. He has 10 for the year, which leads the Big Ten. And he is the beneficiary of the double teaming that his uh, defensive tackle next to him is getting. Mark Nichols is getting so much respect that they double team him. That leaves Travis Davis one on one. Dan Straczynski in the punt. Gets it out of there with no pressure. Todd Crum backs up into the bright sun, takes it at the 41. Good return for Crum as he crosses midfield. And on its second possession, the Michigan State Spartans have it on the Indiana side of midfield at the 48-yard line. That was a 41-yard punt. So remember, Montgomery hit a 57-yarder in his first punt at 16 yards plus, and the defense stopped them there. Death Valley is full of life this evening as Clemson, ranked nine in the country, comes back and they defeat Maryland 45 to 16. Terry Allen scored two touchdowns and uh, Rodney Williams also threw two touchdown passes. And that means that Clemson wins the ACC for the second consecutive year. Now back to Keith Jackson. So the Tigers, so tough in Death Valley. Now Michigan State with the ball, second possession. They're warmed up, good field position. They may open the throttle a little bit here. Andre Risen, Willie Boyer, the wide people that is Risen in motion, brings him to the boat, the same side as Boyer, and here's McAllister's pulling the pass down and deciding to run it. Turns it up field, and he's brought down by Van Waiters, and here's Mike Adam Lee. 
Well, Keith, in addition for the Rose Bowl berth being on the line in the Big Ten Championship, Michigan State and Indiana are also playing for something else that a lot of people don't know about. You've heard about the little brown jug between Michigan and Minnesota, the old oaken bucket between uh, Indiana and Purdue next week. Well, Michigan State and Indiana for, since 1950 have been playing for the old brass spittoon. And after this play, we'll, we'll talk to you about that in a second. McAllister looks, can't find anybody, and takes off. He's a good runner, and he's down to the 41-yard line. Go ahead, Mike. Yeah, to continue with that story, I talked to a lot of people. They didn't know that this thing existed, but it has since 1950. Last year, as a matter of fact, Indiana won the old brass platoon, 17-14. After the game, word has it that one of the things that Coach Bill Mallory said was, hey, where's that platoon? Well, Michigan State couldn't find it. They later had to send it to uh, Indiana, and today Bill Mallory brought it back, and he'll be giving it back to Michigan State if Indiana loses. Some interesting Big Ten lore, Keith. <laughs> Where'd it come from? I, I, bet, I, bet, I bet not one of these players is worried about that spittoon today. <laughs> right. They don't, it's full of roses. They don't shoot. Third down, two. Or thereabouts, as McAllister again wants to throw it. Again, can't find anybody. And the ball squirts loose. But I think they're calling him down, and they are calling him down. He'll be down around the 42-yard line. But what that's going to do is bring up fourth down. And it's going to bring Montgomery in to punt. The defensive coordinator for the Hoosiers, Joe Novak, was more concerned with McAllister's running than he was with his throwing. He says, I hope he throws the ball. We want him to throw it. The ball came out right there, but it was after he was down. He is more dangerous to Indiana as a runner than he is a thrower. Montgomery's in to punt now. He wants to hit a little knuckleball and hang it up there a while. Buford is deep, standing back at his 10. He gets it high. And Buford comes up and wisely calls fair catch. And Montgomery didn't quite get what he wanted. Uh, the ball got up. It was a stood on its tail and just laid there. And they wound up with decent field position out of it, actually, at their own 18-yard line. Michigan State uh, hockey team beat Michigan last night 6-3 here at home so uh, Tony Mandarich a big offensive tackle for George Perlis comes out of Canada he's a skater 6-5 six, six, 300 <laughs> yeah, they, ought let, they ought to let him warm up at least uh, just they, warm up with the hockey team that scared the other folks half to death just see that big elephant out there on skates Craney rolls out sideline pattern incomplete as intended for Ernie Jones. Ernie has had one hit him in the hand, but he was looking right into the bright sun. Don't think he ever saw the ball and didn't hold on. Otherwise, he hasn't really had a chance to catch one. Well, Indiana did the right thing this time, Keith. They threw away from the sun. They threw to the wide side, which was left, which is in the shade. And like we said, it's tough for a receiver to look back in that sun. They threw to the right side of the screen now as you're looking, and that's the side they should be throwing to. Second down and 10 now. Ramey is two of eight for only uh, 24 yards. He's missed on his last five. Got Jones in motion going back toward the ball. Pressure on. Craney down inside the five. Mark Nichols and Jim Szymanski. Szymanski at the end and Nichols the tackle on the same side. Take a look at it from the offensive side. A play-action fake. Kramy cannot see the rush coming at him. Nichols, 83, gets there first. Shemansky, 91, helps out. But the sack goes to Nichols. This offensive line has been very good all year, protecting the quarterback. But they have not faced the number one sack team in the Big Ten, Michigan State. And it brings up third and 24 for Indiana. You may very well see him run the football right here. Holtz and Thompson out of the eye behind Craney. Oh, he's going to put it up out of the end zone for Jordan, the tight end. 
Drilled him too. Beautiful pass by Craney, but it is well short of the first down. He got the ball out to the 24-yard line, but he had to get it to the 29. I can't tell you how good a pass this is. He rolls, so he has good vision. Maybe you can see there he is right there. He throws it behind one defender, the linebacker. An outstanding throw and catch by Jordan. Tells you a little bit about Mallory and what he thinks about Cramey, his backup, quote, unquote, quarterback. They let him throw out of his own end zone this early in the game. Hoosiers leading three to nothing. We'll have to punt the ball now. Straczynski's first kick was for 41. Take this one just a bit, but it's a tail dragger and takes an Indiana roll, except Crum won't let it roll. He comes right to it and grabs it. And that's good thinking on Todd Crum's part. Because if he doesn't come up and catch that ball on the first bounce, it's probably still rolling. Winds up a 33-yard punt. Why the devil had it for you next week? Two games that are loaded with tradition and pride and bragging rights and all that kind of stuff. We open it with Michigan and Ohio State at Ann Arbor and come right back after that game with USC UCLA at the Coliseum in Los Angeles. The USC UCLA game will be a Rose Bowl decider out west. Here's Lorenzo White straight ahead. I say it'll be a decider, but USC has got to handle a tough Arizona Wildcat team today. And UCLA was leading Washington in the Rose Bowl at Pasadena, their home field, 13-0. A little bit ago. UCLA has not beaten Washington in the last four years. Well, they're liable to today. Though the Bruins still don't have Gaston Green. Brian Brown banged up. They lost Melvin Jackson, an outside linebacker. So their injury is depleting their powerful roster somewhat. This is Lorenzo White. First down, Michigan State at the Indiana 31. Brian DeWitt saved the touchdown. Watch the blocking now. As Sherber right here in front is going to get a nice block. These two men will work well over here. And the uh, and uh, White takes a straight handoff and a huge hole for Lorenzo. You give him that much daylight, and he will put a hole there. He'll put six points on the board. That's what he'll do. Bounces outside. He has that wonderful ability to read so quickly, and those great feet, quick feet. He just bounces until he finds the crack. The thing that scares you about Lorenzo White is his ability to cut back. And what that does to the defense is it doesn't allow the defense to flow as quickly. When he's running left, the right side linebackers can't flow as quickly because he may cut back. And that gives him the outside if he can get there because the pursuit won't be as great. Spartans have run it nine times. They've shown pass three times, but those pass plays shown have resulted in runs. And White, look at that. Now, number 45, Eric Hickerson, was left grasping clean, clear autumn air. I mean, it looked like he had every chance in the world to nail him behind the line of scrimmage, and poof, White was gone. Well, not only was Hickerson fooled, but he is the quarterback. Now, what they're doing is Indiana is putting their corner in their strong safety in running situations to stop the run. Not against the pass, they're doing it to stop the run. <laughs> White now seven carries and 47 yards. It's second down and six. Lorenzo's got it again. Cuts it back. And a penalty flag. Came from the pocket of the referee, Tom Quinn. Tackle by Sam. 91, Jim Sam. Second holding call of the ball game against Michigan State. You gotta keep your hands inside the frame. Well, he did that all right, except he had a handful of cloth. Bobby McAllister looking to the sideline for the play. Early in the season, he was wearing a wristband to help him with the calls. Sometimes they would just flash a number that responded, corresponded to the uh, wristband, and he would look there for the play. Second down, about 13. 
White. There he goes. First and goal at the three. Savage, the tight end pull, makes a couple of nice moves. You know, watch Mandarich, number 79. He's 300 pounds. He comes and gets one of the linebackers. The tight end goes up inside. Lorenzo White likes to run against Indiana. 286 yards two years ago. First and goal from the three. White up the middle to about the two. Lorenzo White has carried the ball on every play in this possession. In the game now, with 10 carries, he has 70 yards. And George Perlis is letting him carry it like John McKay said years ago. Ain't heavy. <laughs> you don't belong to no union. <laughs> Second and goal. White going outside. Good pursuit by number 42, Andre Hall, the strong safety. And real estate gets tough down there because those safeties and corners all get right up along the line of scrimmage. So the first quarter is over. 3 nothing Indiana, Michigan State threatening. Sydney Ward Company president. The Big Ten is not without some other exciting games today. And a wild one, Iowa leading Ohio State 22-21, about five minutes left. It's been back and forth with those two teams all afternoon. And Michigan, on a touchdown with 43 seconds left, defeats Illinois 17-14. The Illini almost had a great Big Ten season. Let's go back to Keith. All right, Al, here, Indiana leads 3-0 as we start the second quarter of play. But Michigan State knocking on the door. Third down, the ball is resting just inside the five. It'll be officially the four-yard line where this play will come from. Hoosier to Bo Durnett since uh, Michigan State had a first and goal at the three. It's White. Touchdown. Lorenzo White. It is said that the game of football is really the acquisition of real estate. And Lorenzo White has just earned his full commission. Certainly has. But we said in the opening, as you take a look at Lorenzo, that Michigan State had to be able to run, that McAllister can throw the ball, but he needs the running game to be able to throw it. On the other side, we said that Indiana is going to have to be able to pass because we don't think they're going to run that much. And I think that's uh, so far is, is held true. Indiana getting a field goal on their first drive. Game going pretty much true to form so far as the shade now has completely uh, covered the football field. And that's uh, for the offensive backs and receivers and the defensive backs. I'm sure they're happy about that. If Michigan State wins the game, they win the ticket to the Rose Bowl. If Indiana should win the game, they will have to beat Purdue next week to lock the Rose Bowl. And neither of these teams have been to the Rose Bowl in over 20 years. 
Well, I guess for Indiana, it's been just at 20. And Michigan State, what, 22, I believe it is. Jones, Allen, Washington are the deep people. Jones may be the more dangerous. Langlow's kickoff. Got it up very high. Goes to Allen. And old Jones to have it. Allen wraps his arms around it and comes back to the 20-yard line where Dixon Edwards takes him down. Well, they go to the Rocky Mountain country for ABC's NFL Monday Night Football. There's a penalty flag on the field as the Chicago Bears and the Denver Broncos will butt heads. And it'll be a good ball game. The Bears have been pulling them out, pulling them out, and pulling them out. Clipping call against Indiana. Should be a dandy of a ball game Monday night, Keith, with Chicago going to uh, Denver. It could be a uh, preview of the Super Bowl. Both teams certainly are well stocked with talent. Broncos have been damaged some, though, by loss of running backs. They've had uh, their fair share of injuries so far this season. But Elway's healthy. First quarter numbers are these. see there the rushing yardage only three for Indiana that's not a surprise when you play Michigan State and the 70 rushing yards and no passing yards for Michigan State I, I really believe that, that that kind of trend is going to continue the rest of the game all right the clipping call puts the ball back inside just inside the 10 Powell is the fullback. Thompson is the tailback. Frame the quarterback. This is Thompson. Can't get around the corner. It was John Miller and Mark Nichols that did the job. Miller came to the outside, forced him to turn it back inside, and when he turned inside, there was big Mark Nichols. And here is Nichols here, Keith. Now the guard is here, and he's going to pull. When the guard pulls, Nichols just follows him, saying, hey, if you're going out there, something tells me the ball eventually will be there as you see him shed the block of the fullback and gets over and makes the tackle. An outstanding player. Perlis was saying yesterday he's got all the moves. Loss on the play of about three yards. Call it second down and 13. Cramey want to throw it out of his end zone. Gets it away too high and incomplete. It was intended for Powell coming out of the backfield, but in fact, Miller had the better chance to catch the ball, and there is another penalty flag. Holding Indiana. It's a time, as Frank Royal used to say, it's a time for poise, poise, poise on Indiana's part here. Oklahoma State opening it up. And so is Tennessee, for that matter. The ball is now back at the seven-yard line of Indiana. On that last play, I was sort of reminded of the older Walter Kemp uh, comment from that book that I was toting around for a while, <laughs> where it says the idea is, for well, the opening of the hole is to... Uh, not let the enemy in, but keep the sortie going out. <laughs> Didn't work. And before it closes. That's right. Franey again. Throws it out of the end zone. Deep downfield, and it is incomplete intended for Ernie Jones. Covered by Derek Reed, who came to Michigan State from Southern Methodist. The Hoosiers are going to have to pump the ball out of the end zone, and the Spartans should have it in pretty good field position. With sure-handed Todd Crum back there to handle the punt from Dan Straczynski. The key thing for Indiana to realize is not to panic. This is a tough right. defense they're playing against. It's going to be a low-scoring game where you have plenty of opportunities to move the football. Spartans loaded up front. All ten of them up there. And Stratinsky gets a good high-hanging kick out of the end zone. Runs Crum back to the 45, but he's got some room to run with it. 
and returns the ball inside the 45 down to the Indiana 44. That's a 48-yard punt out of the end zone, a 12-yard return, the tackle by Derek Daniel. And I think we've got another flag. They lay it back down around the 10-yard line. Let's see what Tom Quinn has to say about it. Well, it's holding against Michigan State. Well, it's not surprising that we're having so many penalties here early in the game. Both of these teams, as I mentioned, very uh, highly penalized up until this point. You look at the field position for both. Before this penalty, Michigan State was going to get the ball for the second time in Hoosier territory. And, of course, the penalty will back them up some. But there's no question that they're getting the better end of the field position. We have holding by the receiving team. It's a post scrimmage kick spot foul. It'll be enforced at the end of the kick where the kick ended. So that's a big penalty because they had the ball down at the Indiana 44. The uh, ball was accepted back at the, about the 45. It looks like a 20-yard penalty to me. It's a 20-yard penalty. Well, it's, in, <laughs> it's enforced at the point where the kick ended. You mean where he was tackled? No, no, no. Where, the where kick, he caught it. Where he caught it. That's what they did. So it's first down at the 36. Mike Dushik could have driven the laundry truck and uh, three automobiles through that one as he crosses the midfield stripe to the 49 of Indiana. Well, they're running to their left again behind Kula and Mandarich. And when you've got something going, you keep going until they stop it. A huge hole as DeWitt, number 13, who played quarterback last year for Indiana, in fact, started six games, now has to step up and see Lorenzo Wright coming at him. Looked like a blur, didn't it? Got it again. And we'll pick up two yards on that carry as Darren Bush, the junior from Massillon, Ohio, brings him down. Well, Ohio State and Iowa having a fair to Midland war. If Indiana wins, I'll repeat it. Iowa stays alive in the Big Ten chase. Iowa loses, of course, they're out of it. Regardless. Just short at the 46. Second down and seven. Oh, Mandrich. Tony lost the count. Moved too soon. Can you picture him on ice skates? <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to see it. 6'5 and uh, 300 pounds. It, you would think he would look like a Zamboni. <laughs> Bottom left. There he goes. Just moving a little bit too soon. And you can't hide when 300 pounds moves early. He's a big, good-looking youngster from Oakville, Ontario, but went to high school in Ohio. Stayed with his brother, who was going to school at Kent State. That's where he got his grooming for his career in college football in the United States. Second and 12 from the Michigan State. Well, let's call it second and 12 now from the Spartan 49. White has carried the ball on 10 straight plays and make it 11. There he goes outside. Van Waiters missed him. And he's close to a first down before Willie Bates gets him. Take a look at Waiters, number 48 in white jersey. He gets blocked, keeps his outside position. Two men blocking, both the fullback and the tight end. And then White just takes off around him. Great speed to get around him. That is Waiters' fault. That's his responsibility. Contain, turn everything back to the inside. That's why they put him to the wide side of the field. And last year, he was very successful in stopping just that type of run. With 12.34 to play in the first half, Lorenzo White's carried 15 times, and he's over 100 yards. He's got 102 plus this. Boy, he is, he is wound up today, isn't he? All the way down to the 21-yard line. Mandridge, Mandridge, the 
number 79, and Sargent, number 49, blocking straight out. Mandridge right there, blowing his man off the line of scrimmage. If you're wondering why Lorenzo White is doing so well, part of the reason is Mandridge. They're running behind him most of the time. He's now got 121 yards. And it's first down, Michigan State at the Hoosier 21. This time the fullback gets the ball, and James Moore, a sophomore from Lansing, will pick up a couple of yards to about the 19. That's just window dressing. Let the fullback carry it. <laughs> Let him carry it now and then. Give White a rest. You know, and it was a play that White didn't have to do anything either, Keith. Just stand in the eye formation and not do anything. We'll give it straight ahead to the fullback. You get a blow, and we'll give it to you this time. Spartans have run it 20 times. They get to throw it. White. This time, it's Darren Bush, the inside backer, who had a crack and came flying through, and he nailed it. Back outside the 22. Well, they're trying to change up. Here's Bush here. These two men are going to go to the inside, and Bush will come around to the outside to make the play. They're going straight blocking. See how it fouls up the blocking? The right tackle, Houle, couldn't get through to get on uh, Bush. That time he scraped around the outside and made the play. Michigan State here gets a little mixed up in its substitutions. And rather than uh, make a mess of things, Andre Risen called a timeout. The students in South Bend want to go to Florida, throwing oranges on the field. However, reportedly, Notre Dame is going to the Cotton Bowl. Right now, they're on their way to their eighth victory of the season. They lead Alabama 20-6 to at halftime. Quarterback Terry Rice has thrown one touchdown pass. He has run for another. That touchdown pass, two yards to Andy Heck. Now, let's go back to Keith Jackson. And here, Michigan State leads Indiana 7-3. to And if the Spartans can win this ball game, they can lock a bowl grip to the west to Pasadena. It is third down and 12 now for Michigan State. You might see the first pass right here. Down the middle in the end zone, rising touchdown. Stop more than a ton of moving cars. So when your brakes aren't right, put them in expert hands. 
Midasites. We don't miss a thing. We fix them right the first time. That's why Midas can guarantee its brake shoes and pads for as long as you own your car. It may be the most important guarantee you'll ever get. Midasites. Get it right the first time. Next Saturday, Ohio State confronts arch-rival Michigan. Then fifth-ranked UCLA meets USC for the Rose Bowl bid. Doubleheader action begins with ABC's College Football Today. All right, Bobby McAllister's first pass, first completion, big one. He had five touchdowns coming into the day. He was the seventh-ranked quarterback in the Big Ten. He doesn't throw that often, but when you run as well as Michigan State, it sets up a lot of one-on-one -on -one situations. Ryzen, as I mentioned, made the All-Big Ten team last year. The receiver opposite him was Mark Ingram. He was the first-round draft choice for the New, uh, New York Giants. They both came from the same high school and both played quarterback. 22-yard strike, 14 to 3. Michigan State, 10:55 to go. First half, Indiana now. They'll try to generate some offense. And Ryzen's on the kickoff team. Because I can do a lot of things for us. Allen Jones in Washington will go deep now for Indiana. Keith, if the people are wondering about this game, this is nothing new for Indiana. Of their seven wins this year, they've come from behind in the second half to win five of them. For some reason, they're a slow starter, but hang on. The fireworks will be in the second half for Indiana. Langlow's kick, a high hanger, short, 16-yard line, dropped, fumbled, and recovered at the 20 by Ken Allen. Right now, the Hoosiers are sputtering. They were down 16-0 uh, to Ohio State, came storming back to win a ball game. No sun to shine in his eyes here. Allen just a little bit too anxious. Their field position hasn't been anything to write home about. 26, 22, 18, 10, and 19. And now they're going to start this time uh, just short of the 20. Absolutely terrible field position, partly due because of the fact that Montgomery, Michigan State's punter, and you don't want to have to go the entire length of the field against the number three defense in the country. It does tend to get a little tiresome, doesn't it? <laughs> that goes Kramer to throw. A third time in the ball game, it's been deflected at the line of scrimmage. Third time. He's got to loop that ball a little more. That's also the third time that big Travis Davis has reached up and slapped it down. Well, when you talk about quick release, quick release, you can tell when you keep getting balls knocked down, it's from the time you make up your mind to show pass till the ball is gone. Right there you see Davis, a blur. That's probably been the first time Davis has ever been called a blur. <laughs> <laughs> as big as it is. It is yeah. <laughs> Gets his hand up and knocks it down. 255 pounder. Second down and 10. This time it's Thompson. Picks up a load at around the 23 yard line. Load in the main. Travis Davis followed by Derek Reed. Framey now is 3 of 12 for 44 yards. He had four starts last year and one in 1985. As I mentioned, he is their sixth all-time passer. So with the absence of Dave Snell, who had the appendectomy last week, they still have a good quarterback to go to. Third and a long six. Shoots it down the middle to Buford. Depends on the mark. Where did he spot it? At the 30, it's a first down. Crowd hoots on it. Tony Buford, 165 pounder, took a pretty good wallop, but he had tucked it away. Todd Crum, 35, look at him right here. He looks to the left side all the way. He sees Buford coming in, and he's right there to make the hit. Crum was an outstanding player, also a baseball player, had an opportunity to sign with the Mets. But he said, I want to come back for my senior year. He leads the Big Ten in interceptions with seven. So it's first down Hoosiers at the 30.
fullback. And pretty good lab drive for Tom Poults, 220 pounder. And he moves the ball out close to the 35 yard line. Still close. I was going back to the lead. Boy, they've had quite a war in that one. And look at this. Washington has bounced back the lead. UCLA, 14 to 13. Notre Dame, as Jim Hill told you a little while ago, beaten up on Alabama at halftime. I thought Alabama speed might be a factor in that one, but Irish getting momentum every week. This is Polk, the fullback. About the line of scrimmage. Very slow play developing. And Michigan State just swarmed it at 840 to go in the first half. Nichols and Larson made the tackle. I might tell you that economically speaking, green and white bread sales at an all-time high this week. And so are roses around the Lansing, East Lansing area. Well, it's not hard to tell. The left side of your picture there, you can see some red in the end zone, the corner of the end zone. That's where the Indiana faithful are located. The rest of the stadium is spotted with white and green. Only got 2,500 tickets. Hold them all in a hurry. Ramey's pass drilled to his tight end, Jordan, and he picks up a first down on the catch. So, Tim Jordan, the junior from Westchester, Ohio, keeps the Hoosiers moving. He's made three catches for 39 yards. Ramey turns and look to his, looks to his right initially, which is a help, and throws to his tight end crossing. That was his first completion of the day. Jordan came into this game with 25 receptions and has become more and more of a target as the season has progressed for the Hoosiers. First down at their own 43 with Michigan State leading 14 to three in the second quarter. And Franey stays in the air. Goes down as Mark Nichols comes firing in, the ball rolling around. And Michigan State comes out of there with it. Nichols knocked it loose. Watch Nichols to the right side of your screen, fighting off the block of Schrader, gets around and makes the hit. We told you that Michigan State is an aggressive, big play defense. Here again, they knock the ball free and give good field position to their offense. Kurt Larson, linebacker, recovered it. Spartans first down, Indiana 44. Lorenzo White to the 40. There's the redhead, Dave Creamy. Having a hard time so far against the Spartan defense. One thing that Mallory has done for this Indiana ball club is, is hard work. They have a positive attitude. They stay together as a team. They realize they're not the greatest talent in the world, especially on defense. But they get it done. They believe in each other and great leadership. Second down six. White again. Behind the line of scrimmage. Number 54, Doug Slurry. Junior from Biddy Ford, Maine. He's one of the three or four Hoosiers who like to go to the weight room at 5 a.m. in the morning. No, thank you. <laughs> but this is one of the things that IU has to do with their defensive line. They have to slant it one way or the other. Michigan State's offensive line is too big to stay there and let you come out and block you straight on. They've got to mix it up, slant one way or the other, so you don't have those huge gaping holes for those linebackers to have to step up and fill. Third and eight. McAllister shows pass and put it up. Rising. One-handed grab. You talk about big players making big plays in big games. Lorenzo White has already rushed for over 125 yards. Their other big player is this man right here. Watch this catch. That's a one-handed catch all the way. 
tell you, it's, it's nice to see players rise to the occasion. And I'm not pulling for Michigan State. I'm just saying that Michigan State's making some plays. Outstanding catch. Joe Ziegler, number 16, is injured on the field, off the field, actually, on the sidelines, just now beginning to come around, and you've got timeout. <laughs> Joe Ziegler, he's up and about. Looks like it might be uh, somewhere in that knee or ankle, somewhere in that vicinity, but obviously in some pain. A uh, sophomore from Miami. All right, it's Michigan State's ball first down. At the Indiana 23, Mike Dumas, a freshman, goes into the ball game for Indiana at that cornerback position. And he's a true freshman, Keith, and he's covering Ryzen. Lorenzo White from the 23 to about the 19, four yards on the carry. And watch the work of Mr. Mandarich, 79. Second man to the inside with a green jersey right there. Blocking on the big linebacker, Waiters. Waiters does a little old lay at the end. Mandarich was saying this week that last year's game, Waiters got the best of it. Perlis was saying yesterday that this kid is a mean kid, and he says he's looking to get even. Here's the pitch back to White. Can't bounce this one outside. There's a penalty flag down. Number 42, Andre Hall, a strong safety, had penetrated and ran him back into Waiters. It's interesting, uh, as we get the penalty call indicated, I think, against uh, Michigan State, that in the opening game of the season they put Mandarich over on Marcus Cut and handled him pretty well and now here against another outside linebacker of outstanding quality they put big Mandarich on him. We have a huddling foul. Okay. George a little upset over the call. George is a defensive lineman by trade. Gets a little hot under the collar now and then, which defensive linemen have to do. Here's Waiters, 48. Let's see if it was holding. No, it was not there. Take a look at Mandarich, 79. See if he was holding. Yeah, right there. His arm, his left arm was outstretched across. I don't know, though. When the defensive man turns and doesn't present the front of his body to you, and you turn. The, defense, the offensive man has a right to have his arms slip around the side. From the 37. After the penalty. They've got to go to the 13. So they need 24 and McAllister back. He gave up on the pass. He only had uh, two men deep, one man short. James Moore, he couldn't see Moore. And he finally pulled it back down, and they deck him back around the 41-yard line. Iowa has defeated Ohio State 29-27. That's the final score. So the Hawkeyes survive a narrow one and against the Buckeyes. They're still in the, the hunt for a, for a very nice bowl trip. Oh, yeah. And they can possibly still be in the hunt for the Rose Bowl if things work out. Now let's call it third and 29 after that last loss. McAllister gave up pretty quick on his pass routes. Nobody coming back toward him. Probably made the better decision. I'll be back to throw again. This time he throws it over to Lorenzo White, who makes a one-handed grab and turns in a big play down to about the 30. But that'll be fourth down and probably Langlow into the game. At four minutes to go in the first half. Nice call here, Morris Watts, the offensive coordinator. Third and real long. Don't do anything stupid. A screen pass. Let's throw a screen pass. Let our halfback, our All-American halfback, make a great catch and get some yardage and move us into field goal range, and we'll send out our kicker. Good call. So the ball is just short of the 30. The tee is put down at the 37. So it'll be a 47-yard try. Go hit the bar. Bounce over.
few games back, Lango had it. Langlo had an opportunity to kick the winning field goal against Illinois. He kicked it low into the line, and they tied that game. Here is a very big out of the uh, signpost on the road to the Rose Bowl for Michigan State. At 3:24 to go in the half, it's now 17 to three. Spartan. These kickers help each other out. That's Montgomery, 23, with the good hands and a perfect hold. They got their lucky green shirts on today. <laughs> Langlo will now kick off for Michigan State. Let's see if he kicks to Allen again. He's kicked it right at him three straight times so far in the ball game, and now they reverse it. They put Jones over there, and Jones, Ernie's <laughs> got it. And looks for an opening and comes up across the 25 to the 26. Mike Adamley. Well, Keith, all week long we've read stories about how things are kind of dead in Bloomington. Not too many people are, are psyched up about their... Uh, great football team and that's the reason why that is is because they're all here in East Lansing silence 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 they're down they're down 17 to 3 but they're still enthusiastic Clem Harrison her son uh, number 92 Nolan Harrison playing a good game basketball isn't the only sport in Indiana is it no football is <laughs> football is the best it's been exciting so far this year, hasn't it? Oh, yes, yeah, so far. We're going to go all the way to the bowl. Get some points on the board. Framey, no. Intended for Kenny Allen. So it looks like now that uh, Bill Mallory has decided that he's not going to be able to run the ball much. So he's committing himself to the pass. Well, we said at the top that the, the, the balance of this game rode on the shoulders of Cramey. We didn't think that... They would be able to get a running game going. The thing they need to do is be able to get the ball to Ernie Jones a little bit more. He came in having caught 54 passes and 12 touchdowns. In fact, he's caught a TD pass in eight of their nine games. He is their big play receiver. Very good after he catches the ball. This is Thompson. Anthony struggles out to about the 30 in the arms of Larson and Snow. And you're now at three minutes to go, and that's what we'll have for you at halftime. Provincial halftime report, getting a rundown of all of that which has been happening around the country. Third and six for the Hoosiers. Jones, Ernie Jones is still going inside the 35-yard line. Wow, great play, Ernie, and a heck of a pass by Creamy. 37-yard pickup on the play. And Michigan State, now that they shut down the run, is going to try and shut down Ernie Jones. Watch the two men right here. They'll double him in and out. He's just going to go down and break between them. It's an outstanding throw. The man over him jumps to the outside. The other man is inside. Cramey just throws it right between them. Crum, 35, as surprised as he can be. And a nice uh, run by Jones. Cramey takes a pretty good lick, too, after he released the ball. So the Hoosiers now with a little something at hand. Inside the 35, run a reverse. This is Ernie Jones. Got some daylight up the middle and knocked off balance. And down by Kurt Larson, number three. Larson may have saved a big play right there. You got to give credit to Nick Saban, the defensive coordinator, for really structuring this defense. Whoever is responsible for the reverse is always there, and Larson was there that time. It's another effort by Indiana to get the ball in the hands of Ernie Jones so he can use some of his running ability to make the big play. Second down and 12, a loss of two. Rob Turner is in at flanker right now for Indiana. 
The Hoosiers with 96 yards passing, 8 yards running. Framey has some time, goes big with it. And it is intercepted in the end zone, intended for Allen. And coming down with it, Todd Crum. The poor throw by Cramey. It's really a throw out of frustration. Man wasn't open. Here's the receiver here. He's going to go straight down. Crum is here. The defensive back on this side will be there also. And he's not open at all. To the, to the far right of your screen, watch Cramey. I mean, Crum jumps and takes the ball away. Cramey made a very poor decision to throw it. Sometimes when things aren't going right, you do these things out of frustration. Crum leads the Big Ten in, recept in interceptions. He now has eight. 1.15 to go in the first half. This ABC Sports Exclusive brought to you by New York Life to help you get the most out of life. And by Michelob Light. When the sun goes down, light up the night with Michelob Light. Todd Crum was a corner last year and they didn't feel like he had enough speed on the corner and he switched to safety, lost some weight, picked up a couple of tenths in the 40-yard dash and was doing very well. First down at the 20 and carrying is Lorenzo White for three yards and he's now got 123 yards on 22 carries. Well, he came to defend the week. Now he is the hunted Sable tonight on ABC. Then somebody's trying to rip off a half million bucks. Bad idea when O'Hara's in your ballpark. Pat Morita, the star, followed by Hotel tonight on ABC. Second down, seven for the Spartans. They lead 17-3. And Lorenzo White working hard today and having a big day. Eric Hickerson, that tackle for Indiana. believe that George Perlis game plan Bob was to uh, let White do that much work but when you're hot you're hot right 23 to 5 they're going to let the clock run down first half is over and the Michigan State Spartans lead the Indiana Hoosiers 17 to 3 at halftime if the Spartans win the game, the Rose Bowl trip belongs to them. Good afternoon. I'm Al Troutwig along with Jim Hill in New York. This is the Prudential Halftime Report. And if you're looking for a team that believes in itself, look no further than Syracuse. And we'll tell you about them in a moment. And also a team that believes in itself is Michigan State. They need a victory in order to go on to the Rose Bowl. It's halftime right now. The Spartans lead Indiana 17-3. to Lorenzo White has scored on one touchdown. Bobby McAllister has thrown a 22-yard touchdown pass to Andre Risen. Well, UCLA has jumped out to a lead over Washington. It's 16-14 to at halftime. Uh, Gaston Green has not played. Eric Ball has scored two touchdowns in that game, one of 22 yards, the other of 54 yards. Oklahoma had uh, qu uh, quarterback uh, Charlie Thompson to run into pit coach Barry Switzer. Both are okay right now. It's a final score, okay for Oklahoma and the Sooners, 17 to 13 over Missouri. Boston College led Syracuse 17 to nothing. However, the Orangemen came back and scored 45 straight points. They go on to win big. Score there is 45 to 17. And coming up a little bit later on, Corey McFerrin will have a live report from that game. And the game of statistics Alabama playing Notre Dame this afternoon it is Notre Dame leading in the third quarter the score there is 23 to 6 in favor of the Fighting Irish quarterback Tony Rice has thrown one touchdown pass and run for another in the SEC Auburn playing Georgia this afternoon the Auburn Club leads Georgia 7 to nothing. That is in the second quarter. Jeff Berger threw a 21-yard touchdown pass to Loria Tillman. Also in the ACC, now it's a final. Clemson defeats Maryland 45 to 16. Terry Allen ran for two touchdowns, and Rodney Williams threw two touchdown passes. Here's one of those touchdown passes, and they're really jumping up and down in Death Valley. Williams 50 yards to Gary Cooper. That made the score 10 to 7. Clemson went on to win big 
45 to 60 now. They had a paw population celebration there today. Paws, uh, I guess there were paws all over come, town. Yes. Yeah. Well, how hot is Chuck Hartlieb? Very hot. Last week, this Iowa quarterback tossed seven touchdown passes for a Big Ten record, more than 1,400 yards coming into today's game in his last four games. And with 16 seconds left, he passes Iowa to a 29-27 victory over Ohio State. That is now a final Ohio State having a disastrous season. And people are now starting to talk about Earl Bruce's job, but that's a little hard to believe. Michigan today over Illinois in a very close game. The Illini have been tough in their last five or six games, 17-14. And we'll take a look at one of the most important plays in determining the outcome. Fourth quarter, fourth and eight from the Illinois 22. Michigan quarterback Demetrius Brown, a 10-yard pass to Chris Calloway, and that gave Michigan a first down. It came down then to a play with only 43 seconds left in which Phil Webb took it in from two yards out, and Michigan defeats the Illini 17-14. Today, Purdue was a winner, 20-15 to over Northwestern. Purdue has won the last 12 in this series, and they haven't lost at home to Northwestern since 1950. South Carolina moving on up. Today defeated Wake Forest 30 to nothing. Todd Ellis, the talented South Carolina quarterback, found Harold Green for a 33-yard touchdown pass, and Green had two other rushing touchdowns, so expect that ranking to improve if that's possible with the teams above South Carolina. Arkansas and Texas A&M, an important Southwest Conference game. A&M has gone to the Cotton Bowl two consecutive years, and right now they lead Arkansas 7 to nothing. The Razorbacks, who have a shot at the Cotton Bowl, haven't been there since 1975. Texas today held on to their Southwest Conference hopes with a 24-21 victory over TCU. The star of the day for the Longhorns was the son of Terry Metcalf, Eric Metcalf. 206 yards, 36 carries, two touchdowns, including a 57-yard run. Today, Texas forgetting about last week's horrible loss to Houston, 60-40, with a 24-21 win over TCU. Still to come, we'll bring you McFerrin. McPherson and McPherson. No, it's not a law firm. It's the story of Syracuse. Today on the Prudential Halftime Report. This is Jim Hill in New York, ABC Prudential Halftime Report. We're having some video difficulties with our line to Corey McFerrin on the Syracuse game. We'll try and get that to you as fast as we can. But right now, let's talk about some Pac-10 scores. USC needing a victory in order to keep their Rose Bowl hopes alive. They trail Arizona in the first quarter. The score is 7-3. to three. Arizona State is playing Cal this afternoon. California Golden Bears in the second quarter leading Arizona State. The score is 14 to nothing there. Oregon has lost four in a row. Right now, they lead Washington State in the second period. It is 21 to 7. Stanford. Stanford has won 16 of, of the last 18 in their series against Oregon State. Right now, Stanford's trying to make it 17 out of 19. It's 7 to nothing in the first quarter. In the WAC Conference, Wyoming playing Utah this afternoon. Wyoming, the Cowboys leading Utah, and they have beaten Utah. The final score is 31 to 7. Well, the lose of the BYU-Texas El Paso game is out of the WAC race. Right now in the fourth quarter, BYU leads UTEP. The score is 31 to 17. The Air Force playing New Mexico. New Mexico is one of two winless teams in the country. K-State has a tie in Division 1A. It's 42-20 to 20 Air Force over the New Mexico in the second quarter. Oklahoma State playing Kansas this afternoon. The Cowboys beat Kansas 49-17. to 17. Kansas State playing Iowa State. Last chance for Kansas State to win this afternoon is Kansas State. Uh, we see Oklahoma State right there. Kansas State trailing Iowa State. The score, the final score is 16-14. to 14. Here's a final. Reggie Cobb scores three touchdowns. Tennessee defeats Mississippi 55-13. to 13. Another final. Florida behind uh, Kerwin Bell. He threw two touchdown passes. They defeated uh, Kentucky. The score is 27-14. to 14. That's the final score. Touchdown reception. Final score 27-14 now. Remember in the first game when he got injured and we thought he'd be gone. I thought that was the end of it. He, he fooled had, all of us. He had yeah. a fine season. Uh, the Houston over Temple today, 37-7. to Dave Dacus had three touchdown catches for Houston. Rice and Baylor, another Southwest Conference game, and the Bears looking better than the Owls in the third quarter. NC State and Duke, they beat Clemson, then lost to East Tennessee State. How do you figure the Wolfpack? Well, today they're two points better than Duke, who all four wins have come at home, 47-45, to Wolfpack winning. Also in the ACC, Virginia a three-point win over North Carolina, 20-17. to 17. With 30 seconds remaining, Scott Sekul's nine-yard touchdown pass to Keith Mattioli provided the winning margin. But Virginia still had to intercept on the one as time ran out. Army today, 49-37 in this high-scoring series with Lafayette. Last year it was 56-48. Torrey Crawford, the Army quarterback, came back with a 
great day. Three touchdown passes and uh, an 89-yard touchdown pass, longest in Army history. Navy and Delaware. Uh, Navy a winner today. How about that? 31-22. to 22. That's a final. West Virginia showing Rutgers what football is like. Rutgers had visions of big things. 37-13. The Mountaineers have won five of their last six. Holy Cross and William and Mary. Another Gordy Lockbaum show. 40-7. to 7. Imagine this. 472 points on the Holy Cross season. They never registered a field goal. And finally, it will be the game next Saturday when they play the game. Harvard wins over Penn 31 to 14 and Yale wins over Princeton 34 to 19. That means next Saturday's game between Harvard and Yale, the game will decide the Ivy League title. As we continue on the Prudential Halftime Report from New York. Opening possession, a 49-yard field goal, 3-0. But then the Spartans came storming back. Lorenzo White, who had a big first half, four-yard touchdown run here to make it 7-3, Michigan State. Now, watch this. McAllister pass, 22 yards to Arnie Risen. Touchdown, that made it 14-3. Andre going high for this one. That was the first pass thrown by McAllister, and he nailed his man in the end zone. Then, Langlow. 47-yard field goal try, arched it high into the air, no wind on the field, and it stayed up, and it stayed up, and it stayed up, and then it came down on the crossbar. Good. That's where we are, 17-3. to Indiana making a late threat to close out the half. Framey throws into the end zone, an ill-advised throw, really, because Allen, his intended receiver, was not available, double-covered, and it was intercepted by Todd Crum, and that's how we ended at halftime. And as we come to halftime, let's turn to Bob Greasy and talk about what's going on in those two locker rooms. Well, it's going to be interesting conversations. I'm reminded of uh, Indiana, what happened a few weeks ago against Ohio State when they were down by so many points. Bill Mallory told us that before the coaches even got into the locker room, the seniors, headed by Van Waiters, already had the group gathered together and were telling them exactly what the coaches were going to tell them. We need to get fired up and go out and win this ball game. But I suspect that George Perlis is going to have a tougher time getting his players up the second half than Bill Mallory is. Mallory's groups have done this before. They've come back five out of seven wins this year when they were behind at halftime. Perlis has got to convince his guys that this season is not over. We have not won the trip to the Rose Bowl. And, and Mallory has to tell his, just because we've done it before doesn't mean we're going to go out and do it again. The effort has to be there. Well, now, we ran into an old friend yesterday, a man that I've known a long time, who's influenced a lot of people. He was a player here at Michigan State. He's coached collegiately and professionally. He has cancer. It may or may not be terminal. They don't know. But whatever it is, nobody faces up to a problem, I don't think, with any more courage than my friend, Raleigh Dutch. Here's a conversation. Oh, it's kind of a, a, kind of a tough poker hand, but uh, that's part of life, and you have to, you can do one or two things. You can uh, sit back and wilt, or you can go on and fight it, and... Uh, I'm enjoying every minute and uh, hope that things work out. And I'm here to see a great football game. And uh, George Perlis and his team are very special to me. And uh, I'm very partial, so I'll be pulling for the Spartans. And I had some great experiences under Biggie Munn and Duffy Doherty, Keith. And uh, it's just a pleasure to be back home. Bless his heart. He's got to be happy watching a good football game. He's a heck of a man. He's a symbol of courage considering the problem he faces right now. At halftime, Michigan State 17 and Indiana 3. Under dealer and by Domino's Pizza because Domino Pizza delivers. A look at the statistics at halftime. Look at the bottom. The time of possession is pretty much even. 31 plays for Michigan State and 30 for IU. The two turnovers were big. Also, the rushing yardage for Indiana, only eight yards rushing. They've got to throw to win. Michigan State, 130 yards rushing. Individually, the offensive leaders, McAllister for Michigan State has hit on all three and a touchdown. White has been the offense. 
Risen has caught two and one touchdown. The leading tacklers, the middle linebacker, no surprise there, Percy Snow. And for IU, Cramey has got to play better the second half, 6 of 17. Thompson will probably be used as a receiver out of the backfield. Jordan, the leading receiver, tied in. And DeWitts, the free safety, is the leading tackle. And it's time to go with the second half as the Hoosiers will kick off. Michigan State at the outset had won the toss and elected to defer accepting the second half kickoff so the Spartans will have that first possession. Leading 17 to 3. Stoyanovich, feet ready. Nails it. High drifter, Ezor, 3. 20, 30. runs him down. Eric Coleman can run. Uh, no, Ezor can fly, and Coleman ran him down. 90-yard return. Ezor has played in the shadow of Lorenzo White all year long. Obviously, Pearl has told him that Indiana is a second-half ball club. And this will do more than anything else to deflate their egos coming out here in the second half. That's his first appearance of the day in handling the ball, and those that loud noise coming from the Izar home in Las Vegas, don't worry about it. It'll subside a little while. Handoff goes to Lorenzo White. And White slams it inside the five. Oh, yeah, man. Ball is just inside the two. White picked up about seven yards on that carry. There's Blake Ezor. He's only a sophomore. His father called George Perlis and said, I've got a son for you. I think he's pretty good. Perlis says, oh, no, not another father recommending a son. When Perlis found out that Penn State, Notre Dame, and Miami was after him, he was interested. Lorenzo White? No. Just about, but not quite. So it'll be third down and goal. Not only was Perlis interested in Blake Ezor, but when he found out he was a consensus parade All-American, he was very interested, and he said his father delivered it. He said Blake didn't want to go here, but his father, who had known Perlis from Pittsburgh, and when the Steeler coaches visited Las Vegas, delivered him to Michigan State because he says, I want my son playing for George Perlis. It is third and goal and a half a yard. Guess who's going to get it? Lorenzo fumbles. Michigan State keeps it. Indiana man had it, but James rolled over the top of it, and James Moore recovered it. Number 33. I think Darren Bush was the Indiana man that stuck his head in there, number 40, and knocked that ball out. Well, this is a true test for the Indiana Hoosiers coming out the second half with the history that they've had. A big hit there. You just can't come up with a football. And that brings up fourth down, and in comes Langlow. That's a uh, that's test of their medal, isn't it? No question. Hickerson with the hit that caused the fumble. Langlow from 21 yards. Almost blocked. But it is good. Mike Dumas, the quarterback, had a shot at it. Just missed it. And so Michigan State settles for the field goal to lead 20 to 3. They had it first and goal on the 8 and couldn't stick it in the end zone. But they get 3. You've got 12.34 to go in the third quarter. And yes, roses are moving. Over Indiana's last five games, the Hoosiers have outscored their opponents 79 to 18. 
and have not allowed a touchdown in the third quarter. Well, they have still not allowed a touchdown in the third quarter, but Michigan State just dinged them for a field goal after that 90-yard kickoff return by Blake Ezor. The Spartans have run off 20 unanswered points to lead 20 to 3. So now let's see if the Hoosiers can pick themselves up after that gallant goal line stand. Back go the three men, Washington, Jones, and Allen. Last time they were back there, Jones was in the middle. Michigan State's Langlow kept kicking the ball away from him to Allen. And he and Allen reversed positions so that Ernie finally got a chance to return a kick. See if they do it this time. Nope. And Langlow hits it down the side, goes toward Washington. Spud's got it at the 12. Pops it up. Across the 30, good return out to the 32. Take a look at the possessions. They started in their own territory, no better than their own 26. And keep in mind, they're going against the number three defense in the country. Their last two possessions were turnovers, a fumble and an interception. So this is their best starting point in the ball game at their own 33-yard line. Just getting underway here in the second half. It's been a second half team, remember? And Kramies coming out throwing underneath Thompson. And the tailback will go down at about the 39 with a hit from Kurt Larson. And just like Bob called it, they start using Thompson as a short receiver. Well, he's caught 16 passes coming into the game, and if they can't get him the ball by handing it to him to run, 